Hello everyone, Stanley here and welcome back to another Bug Rock of the Week episode. Today we're going to be checking out the recent 1.17 betas for the Bedrock Edition of Minecraft. And in this beta, they have added the Oxalotl. These guys are absolutely adorable and we're going to be checking them out in detail. And they've also added 28 additional Deep Slate blocks to this beta as well. Not only that, there's also a bunch of bug fixes and bugs that we need to check out too. So it is yet another absolutely jam-packed beta for today's video. Hopefully you enjoy and let's hop right into it. So the first thing that we're gonna check out in today's video is the Oxalotls. I mean, look at these guys. They're kind of staring at me menacingly, but they're absolutely adorable looking. Look at that cute little face. You can't tell me that you don't love that and you just wanna squeeze it and hug it. So as you can see, we got four different Oxalotls before us here. The adorable brown, the cute pink, the lovely yellow, and then the amazing looking silvery pink white one as well. Now there's actually a fifth color of Oxalotl that we'll see a little a bit later and these guys have a lot of very interesting mechanics with them they're actually quite the unique mob so we're gonna check these guys out in detail and then a little bit later in the video we'll get into all the deep slate and the bug fixes and the bugs too so the first immediate things that you need to know about the axolotls is that you cannot actually tame them like a dog or anything however they will follow you as long as you are holding a tropical fish and a bucket and then if you click on two of these guys with some of these tropical fish then they'll actually breed and make some more axolotls which is adorable and there is the baby axolotl he's so adorable and cute and tiny oh and there's the blue one well there you go he looks really cool actually that's my first time seeing him so that is a rare mutation of the axolotl that you can see only by breeding. These guys do not naturally spawn throughout the world. You have to get them from actually breeding two different axolotls. Now, speaking of that, you can actually pick up these guys fully in a bucket, and then you can carry around an axolotl in a bucket. And sorry, y'all, this is my new best friend. His name is Daniel. Look at his face. He's just the most adorable thing in the world. His little feet are sticking out of the bucket too and it's just great. You know you want one of these in your world. Now, of course, you can also speed up the baby's growth by feeding them some of the tropical fish in a bucket. This should be just like the regular growth, so each one of these will increase their, you know, growth by 10% or so, and if you feed them a whole bunch, you'll get an adult. Look at him, he's so adorable looking. These guys are great. So that is all five different colors of the Oxalotls. So next up, you can actually put a lead on these guys. Even though you can't tame them, you can drag them around with you. Right now, the lead is like positioned above their head. That's a bug, it's known. Don't worry about it, that'll be fixed. Now these guys can live on land as well for a short time. So they're kind of like dolphins in a way. They don't need air to survive, but they can survive in air for a short amount of time. And then eventually they'll start to get dehydrated and take damage. And eventually they will die if they don't get rehydrated with some water. So as you can see, they're perfectly fine living up here on the land. They'll even follow you onto land if you're holding a tropical fish in a bucket. Oxalotls are actually quite the ferocious warrior so these guys will attack and kill pretty much every single type of underwater aquatic creature on their own they don't do that much damage but if they're hunting in a pack they can pretty much annihilate almost everything in just a few seconds so as you can see they attack the squids and glow squids they'll attack the tropical fish the salmon the cods and even the puffer fish as well now something interesting about the puffer fish is they don't actually take the poison damage from it it. Pretty much nothing that I've seen actually attacks or fights back against the oxalotls. So for the most part, they are immune to dying from various creatures in the world. As you can see, they'll even attack drowns. And these guys are actually quite the ferocious things when it comes to fighting a drown. They'll basically knock them out of the water into the daylight. And they'll do a lot of damage to them. Like they have quite a bit of knockback when they're fighting together as a group. So as you can see, they're knocking this guy out of the water into the sun. So that he takes fire damage and they pretty much annihilated that guy in a surprisingly short amount of time for how adorable they are now they'll also fight and kill the guardians as well they will take a bit of damage from the guardians whenever the guardians put their thorns out but as you can see they actually play dead when taking damage so these guys will actually regenerate health as they're playing a dead and they don't get targeted by other mobs when playing dead either so essentially they're pretty much immortal and you don't really need to worry about them dying 
for the most part. So that guardian is now dead and they will also attack elder guardians and eventually kill them as well. The elder guardians don't fight back but their thorns damage does a lot of damage to these little guys so you'll see them playing dead quite often. So the only underwater creatures that they don't attack are other oxalotls and they also don't attack dolphins or sea turtles. So all of your sea turtles and dolphins are safe but absolutely everything else in the ocean should be very very afraid of the new oxalotls. So these guys have additional combat abilities as well. For example, whenever they are attacking a mob and you kill that mob before they can, you'll get a bunch of regeneration for it. As you can see, we just got 30 seconds of regeneration one by killing that drown before they can. Now it seems like the more oxalotls you have targeting and attacking that mob as you kill it, the more regeneration you'll get. And also this stacks on top of each other as well. So if we kill this drown before they can, as can see we're now back up to 37 seconds same with this one we're now at 58 seconds it just keeps on adding 30 seconds or whatever the more mobs you kill now this also applies to the elder guardians and mining fatigue as well so as you can see this guy is going to be attacked by all the oxalotls we now have the mining fatigue three from the elder guardian and if we kill the elder guardian that is of course going to give us the regeneration and it's going to remove the mining fatigue simply because these guys were also attacking it. So by bringing along just one oxalotl with you to an ocean monument raid, you're really going to be helping your case a lot. This is way more powerful than you might think as well because all you need to do is kill any mob that any oxalotl is targeting and that will remove your mining fatigue. No milk required. As you can see, it got rid of our mining fatigue and now the elder guardian has added it back. And none of our oxalotls even know that this elder guardian exists as you can see he's behind that wall over there they're not targeting him they don't know about him in any way shape or form but killing just like a salmon that the oxalotl happens to be targeting is getting rid of our mining fatigue so that's pretty cool now keep in mind you have to kill the mob before they can for this little regeneration and mining fatigue thing to take effect. So the oxalotls are going to be spawning underground in underwater areas such as waterlogged caves, underground lakes and ravines, little ponds and basically any form of water that is underground you should see an oxalotl spawn there. However currently this is broken and they do not spawn in the current beta. So moving on to the deep late we have 28 new blocks added in this beta as you can see them lined up behind me here and in the creative inventory there is a lot of really really awesome looking blocks here and these things are so cool so we have four new types of walls we got the cobbled the tiled the polished and the brick varieties four new types of stairs cobbled tiled polished and brick and then four new types of slabs cobbled tiled polished brick we have a bunch of new full blocks so the cobbled deep slate the tiled deep slate the polished deep slate deep slate bricks the cracked tiles the cracked bricks the chiseled deep slate and then finally just like the straight up regular deep slate blocks right here as well so here you can see them all lined up these are all of the cobbled blocks right here these are all of the different tiled blocks these are the polished blocks which are looking very very fine and and then we got all of the brick blocks here we got the chiseled and then finally the deep slate as well so this is quite the expansion to the darker grays and blacks of the building palettes of the game between this blackstone and several other blocks in the game we can do so many awesome dark and menacing builds now it's really quite cool and then of course they've also added the new ores for the deep slate as well so as you can see we got deep slate iron gold diamonds lapis red down emerald coal and then just a regular deep slate block right here the coal is actually quite difficult to see but i guess we'll get used to it over time it just kind of really blends in with the darker hues of the deep slate block now some of these blocks are also directional as well for instance the deep slate can be placed on its side like so kind of like logs and can also be placed facing upwards as well it's a little bit difficult to tell but as you can see this is the side texture and this 
this is like the top and bottom texture. So there's a lot of variability in how you can build with this as well. So breaking this stuff in survival, the deep slate will drop the cobbled deep slate, which you can use for crafting. And then of course you need silk touch in order to get the normal deep slate blocks. So essentially imagine the deep slate as like regular vanilla stone. If you mine it without silk touch, you're going to get the cobblestone, aka cobbled deep slate. And then we can go ahead and smelt this stuff back into the deep slate. So when it comes to crafting with deep slate, it doesn't appear that there is any recipes that involve this. So as you can see, there's no deep slate buttons, pressure plates, slabs, bricks, walls, or really anything else that involves a deep slate at all. If we put this into a stone cutter, there's absolutely no recipes. I'm not sure if there are going to be recipes or if this is just like an inert block that doesn't really turn into anything. Now with the cobbled deep slate, if we put that into the stone cutter, as you can see, then we get all of the different options for the four different stairs, slabs, the chiseled, the walls, and basically everything can be crafted out of the different cobbled deep slate. So if we take some of the cobbled deep slate and we turn that into some of the deep slate bricks, we can turn those one for one into the bricks, and then we can also craft these into the deep slate tiles as well. We're going to go ahead and chuck both of these things into a furnace real quick and that is how you get the cracked versions of those blocks. So smelting deep slate tiles will give you the cracked deep slate tiles and smelting the deep slate bricks will give you the cracked deep slate bricks as well. So that is how you acquire those two blocks. Without using the stone cutter, it is a quite the crafting tree to get the variety of other blocks. So taking some cobbled deep slate, we can put that into a two by two. And as you can see, that'll give us the polished deep slate. And then if we take some of that and put that back into a two by two, that gives us the deep slate bricks. And then taking some of that and putting it back into a two by two again, that'll give us the deep slate tile. So you really got to craft this stuff a lot in order to get all the different varieties But once you have the varieties, of course, you can turn those all into the various different blocks that you can see here So honestly, you can save yourself a lot of time and actual resources as well Just by using the stone cutter and that's really what you should be focused on Also, I feel like it's worth mentioning that if you bone meal moss next to the deep slate The deep slate doesn't have anything happen to it. It does not get replaced with moss blocks Unfortunately, you can't instant mine this stuff no matter what. Even if you have another right pickaxe with efficiency 5, haste 2, and or conduit power, you still can't instant mine the deep slate or the cobbled deep slate. So that is a bit unfortunate because a lot of the world is going to be filled with the stuff below Y0. So we're going to have to deal with some slightly slower mining speeds. Now, speaking of generation, deep slate blobs have been added. And you can find these blobs at and around Y16 in the overworld world. As you can see, nothing is generating below Y0 as has been the case in the last few betas, and I've talked about that extensively in previous videos if you would like to check those out. So we still got nothing below Y0, but that's not really the point. We now have these deep slate blobs generating pretty frequently at and around Y16 and down to Y0. As you can see, the ores that generate inside of these deep slate blobs are going to have the deep slate textures. So we got some deep slate redstone, diamonds, there is a deep slate lapis, and some deep slate gold over here as well. Looking very fancy indeed. So even though like this is one vein of redstone ore, because this part right here generated in the deep slate blob, that is going to have the deep slate texture. And I find that to be very fascinating. There's been quite a few small bug fixes in this beta as well. The two interesting ones that I want to show you is that the drip leaves, the small drip leaves can now be placed on the clay and most other dirt blocks, including moss, as long as those blocks are underwater. So as you can see, this is now a valid placement for all of these forms of blocks, which is pretty great. That gives you a lot more decoration options. It cannot be placed on mycelium. However, when you try to place it on mycelium, it changes the water texture above it, as you can see. And really that happens with pretty much every block that you try to place it on that is not allowed to be placed on so a little bit of a visual bug there and also I was correct when I said in the previous bug rock that breaking the spore blossoms with shears should not drop the hanging roots as you can see that has been fixed these guys will now drop themselves when broken by shears
shears. Of course, you don't need shears. You can literally just punch them and they'll pop off as an item and it's great. So that bug has now been corrected. You can also see a bunch of other bug fixes on screen right now as well. In general, just a bunch of general fixes, updates, refinements, and in general, small details being added to lots of different caves and cliffs features. It's really good to see all these little refinements be made. A new parody bug fix has been added to this beta as well. And as you can see, rabbits will now raid the carrot crops that you have growing in the world. So if you live in or near a biome where rabbits spawn, you'll now have to protect your carrot crops because as you can see the rabbits go in there and they just eat it and it actually causes the growth stages of the carrots to revert so as you can see that was a fully grown carrot but now it's a newly grown carrot so you have to wait for it to grow up all the way again they don't drop any items so there's no form of you know carrot farm possible using this it's just them being a noisance and ruining your carrot farms now thankfully these guys don't seem to really care about carrots like a super ton as you can see we got four of them sitting around this batch of carrots and they only go after the carrots like once every month minute it is honestly a pretty slow process and now moving into some bugs from these betas what do you think is gonna happen when we land on these slime blocks down here well of course you big silly we're gonna bounce on the slime as you do until we get to the negative coordinates in which case the slime just doesn't work at all as you can see we're at negative one and it doesn't work but if we're at y zero then it works perfectly fine and yeah there's really just nothing you can do about it it doesn't bounce at all so do we take fall damage on this? Yes, we do. <laughs> right. So slime is basically completely broken at the negative coordinates of the world. So be very careful about that if you are playing in these betas. There's also another bug with the lightning rod as well. So whenever you throw a channeling trident at the lightning rod, of course, that will summon lightning. And as you can see, that lightning did actually deal damage to this creeper that's standing right here. However, it did not convert that into a charged creeper which is the bug so as you can see takes a lot of damage absolutely does not get converted and as you can see from a natural lightning strike that did actually convert the creeper into a charged creeper so it just needs to be fixed that way the channeling trident also works there's a little bug with the powdered snow that I discovered so you can actually place scaffolding directly on top of powdered snow however you might notice that they have the little bars across the bottom sections and that is what the scaffolding looks like when it's not actually supported by any blocks so yeah it's not actually being supported as you can see we can break blocks next to it and it's just fine however as soon as we give it a support scaffold and then take away that support scaffold all of them break off into items pretty much instantly so that is a little bit of a bug so this functions pretty much the exact same on job addition in these snapshots as well except for you can't place scaffolding directly on top of it and you can't get scaffolding to stay on top of the powdered snow like this either so if you want to this is a little bit of a cursed object situation that you can get in these betas there's also a little rendering issue when you push a skulk sensor using a piston or sticky piston so we can demonstrate this pretty thoroughly just by having an item bounce around as you can see anytime that these skulk sensors get pushed they have this really weird like square above them i don't have any resource packs enabled right now and honestly this just looks really really weird there's also still a bunch of things that skulk sensors don't get activated by such as arrows landing on the ground from a bow or a crossbow these splash potions or lingering potions landing on the ground snowballs hitting the ground or whatever ender pearls hitting the ground also does not activate these skulk sensors as you can see and keep in mind that they still detect you actually throw Throwing the object, they don't detect the object landing or hitting anything, however, which is the bug. They also do not detect you throwing an Eye of Ender or the Eye of Ender popping off as an item. So they do detect the item landing on the ground, of course, but there's just in general a lot of things that these guys still do not detect that they should. 
There's still a few bugs to be worked out with the fireworks and skulk sensors as well. As you can see, lighting off a firework doesn't set them off, and the firework explosions also don't set them off either, as you can see there. Now, shooting a firework with crossbows is a little bit more interesting. The fireworks sliding across the ground actually does produce some vibrations for them to detect. However, if you shoot the firework crossbow into like the corner of some blocks, it's not going to slide around or anything, so it's not going to produce any vibrations, and as you can see, the explosions explosion still doesn't produce vibrations either. And one last bug with the skulk sensor, as you can see mobs can't really pathfind over them. This is a pretty standard bug for Bedrock Edition that happens with pretty much most short blocks in the game. So as you can see these guys just try and jump around on them, they don't actually think they're standing on anything, but they are standing on something. It's just a whole bunch of wonky chaos, and this kind of bug has been around for like two years on Bedrock Edition, so they're probably not going to fix it before the main release. <laughs> Oops, my bad. It appears I've made another 20 minute episode of Bug Rock. I'm trying to keep these videos shorter because like y'all got stuff that you got to do besides watch my silly face all day. So thank you so much for watching this episode. If you did enjoy, then make sure to leave a like on the video as it helps out the video and the channel a ton. And thank you so much for doing that. If you're new here and you haven't already, then consider subscribing so you don't miss future episodes like this one on the channel. If you watched to this point in the video, then you probably enjoyed it and you should enjoy more of them in the future as well otherwise i'll see you guys down in the comment section and in the next one thank you so very much for watching and then there was silence